My gracious and eternal Father, I'm so thankful for this opportunity when we can approach our throne of mercy and grace. Yes. We're so thankful for last night's sleep, for you protecting us and waking us up in our right mind and state of the world. We're so thankful for this opportunity that you've given us to assemble this first day of the week and subscribe in your word, dear Lord, to worship you in spirit. We come to glorify your name, and through that worship, dear Lord, we are encouraged to go on fighting the good fight. Yeah. We're mindful of those who are sick and shut in, those who are struggling in, in many ways. Dear Lord, help us as brothers and sisters to bear each other's burdens, to do good to all men, but especially to those of the household of faith. Yeah. We pray for this country. We pray for this world, dear Lord. We pray during this time, this pandemic, dear Lord. You will use the Christians to remind the world of our need for you, dear Lord. The supreme physician who can, who can cure all, who can steer us through all, dear Lord. Help us to demonstrate uh, that faith that you cause us to, dear Lord, that others may see you in us. We're so thankful for your, your darling son, Jesus Christ, who, who gave up heaven and came to this world and Live a life without sin, yet he was persecuted, dear Lord, and for the good that he did. So help us to follow that, that great example, dear Lord. We're so thankful for the Holy Spirit that he guided the apostles, guided those prophets and all, dear Lord, that you have left us a sword of the Spirit to live by. And help us as we worship you today, dear Lord, as we hear your preached word that we may gain a greater understanding of your will and your way that we may not only live in a way that, 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 that glorifies you, dear Lord, but we are prepared to give a better answer to those who ask for the hope that's in us. Bless our efforts here at Wolf Chase, dear Lord, as we endeavor to, to erect the building, dear Lord, that we can assemble and worship you, but most of all, put lost souls in our minds, dear Lord, that we can share your truths with before it's everlasting too late. Forgive us for our sins, forgive us for our shortcomings. Bless our efforts to do good. In Christ's name we pray you with us. I love to praise Him, and I love to praise His name. I love to praise Him, I love to praise Him, I love to praise His name. I love to praise His name. I love to praise Him. I love to praise His name. I love to praise Him. 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 I love to pra
No, not one. There's not a friend like the Lord Jesus. No, not one. I sung that in Bible class and I thought, man, I just did that here. No, not one. There's not a friend like the Lord Jesus. And the radiance. But we are saved by hope. The hope that is seen is not hope. But what a man see it, why do does he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then we with patience wait for it. 
Paul writing to the church of Rome, helping them, telling them, giving them an understanding. Paul says that we, as Christians, Paul says we are saved by hope. I know there are those who, who, who reject that idea because some folks say we are saved by faith only. And with that understanding, we reject the idea that we are saved by hope. Um, but Paul wanted to encourage the church at Rome. He says, you see, it's hope that saves us. I, I, I'm mindful because this is what's on my mind. And I'll just tell you, all this is, you know, someone sent me a message in the middle of the night saying, I need to preach on hope. And it's something I had thought about until a couple of weeks ago. I know, and I preached on hope for actually not that long ago. And so that just kind of thought, made me think, you know, in a, in a time like this, Christians ought to be reminded that we have a hope. Amen. Is that all right? Yes, yes. We ought to be reminded that we have hope. And Paul says it's better than that. Not just we have hope, Paul said we are saved by hope. And I remember thinking that what thought was on my mind that hope is our fuel. It ought to be. See, hope is our energy. Hope is the thing that keeps me going. I don't know if you ever thought about what real hope is. Because see, a lot of people have hope because some folks hope, you know, it's a lot of things that they know they'll never have or they'll never accomplish. It's not real hope. You know, that you know, folks wish for a lot of stuff. But see, real hope is embedded in something has a foundation. There's a song we sing. It says, my hope is built on nothing else. Oh, yes. Then Jesus' blood and righteousness. Oh, yes. This is a real kind of hope. And I want you to see this hope, this understanding of hope. If you look, go with me to Philippians chapter 1. And Paul said that right into the Philippians church in Philippians chapter 1 and verses of 20. See, hope, uh, it's, 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 it's what we need. It's the thing that, that, that moves us, that keeps us. Because see, without hope, there could be, there could not be the patience which is required to prevent a child of God from falling into this spirit. See, with faith is what, a uh, hope, brother, is what keeps us. And it's not just a wish. It's what Paul says here in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 20. Paul says what? According to my earnest expectation. Verse what? We read that again so I don't miss it. According to my earnest expectation. According to my earnest expectation. And my hope. And my hope. That in nothing I shall be ashamed. Nothing. This is the idea that hope is an earnest expectation. So I read this. But that with all boldness, all boldness, as always, always. So now also Christ shall be magnified in my body. Magnified. Paul says, I have a hope, but it. it's not just a wish, it's an earnest expectation. It's more than just a wish, it's, it's, it's what. We actually say it's a valid claim. My hope is supported by my faith in the God that promised, the God that lied, the God that cannot lie. Promise. My hope is built on nothing less than what God promised us. God promised us. John 10 and verse number 10, brother, John 10, verse 9. It says, the thief from the not but from the steal and to kill and to destroy. Jesus said, but I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Right. Well, God came, sent Jesus, not just to give us eternal life, but to give us life on the right way. Right. And we have hope for that life even now. But it's our trust in God. 
Can you trust God in tough times? There's always the question. Because we serve a God, y'all, that's able, and it doesn't matter what the circumstances are. Amen. And if we're not careful, if we're not careful, we will limit our God. Good teaching. You see, my hope is built on nothing less on what God promised. The God that cannot lie promises life. And I just believe God. And I believe God will bless us. God, God will take care of his people. I remember telling somebody, I said, you know, uh, uh, you ought not just go out and just be reckless. But you ought not be so scared you don't go out. <laughs> you don't hear me. I say you ought not just go out and be reckless. You ought not just go out and be reckless. But you ought not be so scared you don't even go out. Because God that promised us hope for life right now. Go with me, y'all. Joe, y'all know the story. Joe, that, that Joe went through all kinds of circumstances and things in his life. I want you to see this, y'all. It's an amazing kind of thing because in Job chapter 1, when Satan came before God, and he said, Lord, you got anybody out there I can try? He said, he said, he said, you consider my servant Job? He said, and Job was like, and, and Satan was like, yeah, I would try to, yeah, I would, I would try to, I, I can't do nothing with Job. He basically what he was saying. And this is why he said it, y'all. Look if you will. Job 1, verse number 10. It's, it's, it's a marvelous kind of thing. Because I'm telling you, as Christians, can I tell y'all that God is with us? Can I tell y'all that God is with us? Is that all right, y'all? Look at Job. Job 1, verse number 10. This is what Job said. Or rather, this, this is God's faith. What he said. Has not thou made an edge about him? Job said, I can't. Uh, brother Satan said, I can't do nothing with it. Job? I can't do nothing with Job. He said, has thou not, what did he say? Made an edge about him. He said, nah, this is Satan. Spiritually can see what's going on. And God said, have you considered my servant Job? And Satan to God said, well, I can't do nothing with, 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 with Job because you got a hands around him. But he was said. And about his house. And about his house. And about all that he had on every side. I tell you, man, God loves us enough that he'll protect us, y'all. Y'all, listen, you got to trust God. See, my hope is built on Jesus, y'all. And he will give us life now. And he'll protect us, y'all. He'll protect us. Yes. Go ahead, read what he said. You got a hedge about him and about his out and about all his stuff. Go ahead, read it. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands. Yes. Blessed the work. And his substance is increased in the land. Anybody been blessed by the Lord? Yes, yes, yes. God will bless us, y'all. God will take care of us. Somebody, listen, it's not just in tough times, it's all time. God will take care of his people. Always have. But we got to trust him. You see, God, God removed the head and he allowed Satan to affect Job. But even through all of that, y'all, God took care of you, y'all. All you got to hear, y'all, that even, even when God removed the head, and Satan put all kind of calamity in Job's life. God still took care of him, y'all. His, his latter end was better than the beginning. Where is he? Is when you trust God, your hope is built in God, not in circumstances. That is everything. God will take care of it. I just want to encourage you, y'all. If you don't have hope, we ought to get it. We are, because our hope is the thing that fuels us. It's the thing that keeps us going.
See, I believe the thing that kept Job through all the what he had done is that he had a hope in God. That your hope firm in God. See, God gives us hope in this life, not just in the life to come. In the life to come, yet, yeah, but also in this life. Go with me, Colossians chapter 1, verse number 23. And, and, and then I want you to look with me in Psalms chapter 71, because it is David, because God took care of his people. Then he'll take care of his people today. In, 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 in Colossians chapter 1, verse number 23, See, God will take care of us. It's not just He give us hope today. What He says is 23. If we continue in the faith, well, if we can stand so. in the faith, grounded, but and settled, and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Be not moved away from the hope. Go ahead, read of the gospel of the gospel which you have heard, which you have heard, and which was preached to every preacher, preached to every preacher. Be not removed. Here's the thing. What he's trying to tell the Christian is don't give up your hope. Don't let stuff go your way. Yes. No. Because what will happen to us, y'all, in the tough situations that it cause us to lose hope. See, hope is the thing that keeps us. See, the reason I keep hanging on to God is because He promised that He not lie. My hope is built in God, and He'll help us even today. See, when He said that, that be not removed, because there are circumstances and there are trials and tribulations in life that will move Christians away from God. What about us? What about us? Here's a little kind of understanding I thought about Job. Y'all remember Job saying this. Y'all, Job, I, I told you this before. Job said, see, Job trusted God. His hope was in God. And Job said, even if he slay me, yes. Yes. I still trust him. See, with an understanding that I know God is going to take care of me. See, that's what said, right? He said, and Billy does say, when they were about to be thrown into the fire, they say, God will take care of me. Oh, yes. But even if he doesn't, oh. well, still, say it. Amen. So God gives us food. And don't let Life, move you away from your hope. See, if you have real hope in those tough times, it's the hope that will keep, that keep you because we have our honest expectations for something more, for something better, for God. It's my hope because, see, in the Hebrew, do, do, when you wrote the letter, the, the writer wrote the letter of Hebrews, there was a lot of things going on, and people were tripping back into Judaism and they were leaving the gospel. And Paul wrote to the, uh, or rather, the Hebrew writer wrote to him to encourage them. Go with me, Hebrews chapter 6, and verse number 17. He, he wrote to them to encourage them. Can I encourage you this morning that we need to hang on the whole? Oh, yes. Lay our hope in God right. and not in man. Look at Paul. And I'm going to keep giving Paul a credit, but it's all right. Now, Hebrews 6, verse 17. The Hebrew writer says what? We're in God. We're in God. We're in more abundance to show unto the heirs of promise. So to the heirs of the promise. The immutability of his house. The immutability of God. Confirmed it by an oath. Confirmed by an oath. That by two immutable by things. two immutable things. In which it was impossible, it's impossible for God. for God. We might have a strong consolation. And I tell you, because I understand that if God said I believe it, and that's enough to keep me going, even when I don't know what's going to happen. God told Abraham, he said, Abraham, get me out of that country and from my father's house and from among that kingdom until a land that I will show you. 
and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and I will, and I will, and I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, curse them that curse thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. This is the call of God to Abraham. And the Bible says that Abraham left. Verse number four of Genesis 12. It says, and Abraham departed. And he didn't even know where he was going. How do you trust God when you are sure and you got all kind of uncertainty? How do you trust God? Good question, brother. <laughs> Can we trust God? Because he cannot lie. He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He told his disciples, go in all the world, and Lord, I am with you always. See, my assurance when I go out, when I do anything, I know God is with me and I'm with you. That's my whole two immutable things, the God that cannot lie from us. So it means what he said. Who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. All right, say that again. Who have fled for refuge to the hope. Who have fled for refuge. Because of the hope that is set before us. Go ahead and read it. Which hope we have as an anchor of the Which soul. Which hope we have as an anchor to our soul. Because of my hope, I'm not going to be so easily moved. Because of my hope, I'm not going to be so easily discouraged. Because of my hope, y'all. I'm going to say, listen, y'all, the Bible says in Ephesians 4 and verse 4, that's just one hope, that's the Christian hope, that's our hope. It's an anchor to our soul. The anchor to our soul. Keep reading what he said. Both sure and steadfast. It is both sure and steadfast. And which entered into, into that with the, the, the veil. Which enters in, and, and so the idea that our hope, y'all, it is sure. It is steadfast. Watch David, y'all, even in the long ago. Go with me, Psalm 71. David says, this is verse number five about hope. David had an understanding. Can you go? Can you go out in life? And you can say this like David in verse five. David says what? For thou art my hope, O Lord. Thou art my hope, O Lord. Go ahead and read it. Thou art my trust for my mouth. Lord, you are my hope. Lord, you are my hope. As I live, not just for tomorrow, not just for when I'm gone, but my hope right here on earth. Drop down to verse number 14. David says what? He says, Thou art my hope, O Lord. You're my hope. He says what? But I will hope continually. I will hope continually. You know how many trials and tribulations and bad kind of circumstances David had been through in his life. And David said, I will hope continually. Go ahead and read it. And will you praise me more and, and I more? I will praise you more and more. Because the more I hope in you, the more I'm remembered, the more I'm reminded of how much praise I ought to give you. Oh, yes. Yeah, you gotta watch y'all because in tough circumstances, it can make us forget we're supposed to praise the Lord. Good teaching, brother. It'll make us forget. But we ought never forget. And God has blessed us. He'll continue to bless us, even in the tough time. Let me give you this last thing. Go with me to Romans chapter 12. Paul says it like this. It's Romans 12, verse 12. You know, in Philippians chapter 4, and verse 4, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Do you have any reason for rejoicing? Yes. But maybe we forgot. Maybe we forgot we're supposed to rejoice because Satan has put something in our in, in our country and in our city and in our in our life 
that actually cause people to forget to praise the Lord. Forget we have hope. David said, I will, well, I will hope continually. When is it a time that we don't hope? Oh, encouraging the Christians. You know, I, I just tell you that. Y'all know this. Y'all, the Christians in the first century went through some tough times, y'all. They went through some tough times. And Paul writing to the church in Rome, he says in Romans 12, verse 12, he says what? Rejoicing in hope. He said, we are rejoicing in hope. Can I encourage you this week that you ought to spend some time rejoicing with of what God has done for us? To be reminded that we serve a mighty good God. Rejoicing, and He gives us hope for tomorrow. Lord, I thank you. Rejoice in hope. And He says, What? Patient, go ahead and read. Patient. In tribulation. Patient in tribulation. Continuing instant in prayer. Continually instant. He said, because see, life is going to happen, but we trust in hope. Patient in tribulation and continuing in prayer. We ought to be praying, amen. amen. We ought to pray, y'all. But we ought to rejoice also because of our hope. Because of our hope. Because God gave us life now, not just hereafter, but now. You know, Paul was trying to encourage the Christians because in First Thessalonians there were the Christians who had had died, and the, the Christians who were alive were concerned about the, the, the Christians who had gone on. And they were wondering about whether we who are alive is going to prevent them who have already died. And Paul says this, I said, he's like, go with me. First of all, first of all I would you read that. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. He was trying to encourage the church, God. Because they were being, they were a little bit discouraged. Listen, y'all, life is real, we are real. We I understand. Sometimes we get discouraged. Is that all right, God? Listen, I understand. Sometimes we get discouraged. Can I encourage you this morning that hang on to your hope when you get discouraged? Yes, yes. Remember your hope. Tie a knot in the rope and hang on. Yeah. Hang on. It's going to be all right. That's it. That's it. God is good. But more, than, more, more than God is good, He's good to us. God is good to us. I'm thankful to our God. Amen. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13. The Bible says what? But I will not have you be ignorant. I don't brother. want you ignorant, brother. Concerning them which are asleep. Concerning them which are fallen asleep. That you sorrow not. That you sorrow not. Even as others which have no He hope. said, I don't want you sorrowing like those that what? They have no hope. This is God. And I tell you, just like Paul encouraged the Christian, he said, I don't want y'all sorry like the people who died. They don't have any hope. But can I encourage you this morning? We don't want to act like the folks that don't have hope. Somewhere there's got to be a difference between them and us. And we the people with hope and we are the show the world. We still believe in Jesus. We still hope in him. And we don't act like we have no hope. Because God promised, and He cannot lie. See, this understanding, y'all, if we don't have any hope, then what's the purpose? And He says that, go with me, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Paul says that in uh, verse 19. It's not 5. 15. First Corinthians 15 and verse number 19. And you can read all of that in context, but he was just talking about that folks saying there was no resurrection. He 
said there is no resurrection, and the people were worried about no resurrection. Paul said there's no resurrection, then I'll preach it in pain. But he said this in verse 19. He says what? If in this light, on he the says, and, 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 and he said, now if in this light we have hope, can you read that again? If in this life only we have hope in Christ, and if in this life only we have hope in Christ, he says what? We are of all men we are most all men. Most if all we have is hope in this life, y'all right. listen. It's real, y'all. Sometimes we get so attached to this life that the only hope we have is in this life. Like, Lord, and, and Lord, this is all I got, so don't take it. Oh, y'all don't give me that. Paul is trying to encourage the Christian. See, our hope is past this life. It's not just this life. He gives us hope in this life, yes. But our hope is past this life. What if we, what if this world ended today? Then what? What if tomorrow there is no more? That is no. It's kind of like when y'all, I don't know, I'm a rocket fan. Y'all watch rocket. So in, in, in rocket, in rocket two, rocket no, rocket three, rocket had fought Mr. T, brother Lane, and Mr. T knocked Rocky out and messed his head. And they were uh, training. They were getting ready for a rematch. And Mickey was trying to get Rocky to train them. And Rocky couldn't do it. And they were running, and, and Mickey, Mickey said, Come on, Rocky. And I said, No, we'll, we'll do it tomorrow. And Mickey said, There is no tomorrow. What do you do if there is no tomorrow? Because this world is ending, y'all. Sure. Just a little shot of reality in our arm. What if there is no tomorrow? Is our hope only in this life? Is in this life only we have hope? Go with me, Titus chapter 2, verse number. Titus chapter 1, rather, verse number 1. Paul, writing to the church. Y'all, I just want to encourage you, y'all. We have hope as if God will give us hope in this life. But our ultimate hope, y'all. Is past this Because as much as we don't think about it, I wish you could hear the Christian. You could hear the apostle writing to the Christians in the first century all the time. He says that, 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 that our time is at hand. This world is leaving. This world is fading. It's going away. And if this life is no more, if there's no more to this life, then what? Oh, it's something you ought to think about, y'all. You know, because it's real. You know, we sing that song, soon and very soon. We're going to see the king. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. Oh, all of that is real, y'all. You know? Because one day, this either we're going to leave here or this world is going to be over. But, I'll tell you, it'll be okay because we have hope past this life. Oh, yes. Titus, Paul writing to young Titus, and he said, what, first one, Paul, just the introduction of who he is. Go ahead, read. Paul, a oh. servant of God and Sir. the apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect. According to the faith of God's elect. And the acknowledging of the truth. Acknowledging of the truth. Which is after Godliness. After godliness, but me in hope of eternal life, and in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promise, which God that cannot lie promise before the world began. Before the world began, God promised us. I want to stake my claim to God. I want to hang my hat, my salvation. 
on the fact that God promised us eternal life. And this life soon will be over. And we can have hope for something past this life. Oh, yes. Let me give you this last thing. First, first Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 19. Paul writing to the church, y'all. Uh, just you know, just listen, I just want to take this one, take this one and be encouraged. So God give us hope in this life. And we ought to live like we have hope. Our hope ought to cause us to live because just if you don't know, maybe right in the midst of this time, it's hard for people to look to God. And they need to find the people of God that can direct them to Him. Teach you, brother. But they can't direct them to us and we don't want we ain't got no hope. But if we act like we have hope, and we're the people of God, we can help those who are lost. Because the reality is, y'all, we all live in here. You know, somebody say, man, don't talk about dying. You know, that's an old folk thing. You know, y'all know folks say that they didn't want to go to the doctor, because the doctor might tell them what's wrong with them and they're going to die. So if you don't go to the doctor, you're going to die. Going to the doctor ain't causing you to die. Right. Not telling you we leaving here ain't going to make you leave here. Right. We leaving here, y'all. Y'all know. But if we can operate with hope, then it's going to be all right. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9. Let's say 19. It says what? Well, what is our hope? For so what is our hope? What is our hope? Go ahead and read. Or joy. Or joy. Or crown of rejoicing. Crown of rejoicing. Read. Are not even ye in the presence Are of the Lord Jesus Christ and his coming? Paul said, this is the apostle Paul writing to the church. Paul said, this is my hope. My hope is that when Jesus comes back, that all of you that I spent time trying to help, that I find you in the presence of him. That's my hope. That's an awesome kind of thing. Can I tell you, your hope could be that somebody else could be presented to Jesus when he comes back because of you. Oh, yeah. That ought to be our hope. Yeah. An honest expectation. Y'all, let me just tell you, God will take care of us. God will bless us. Even through a pandemic. We serve the house of God. And I don't know ever want us to be, I don't know ever want us to forget that and to not be mindful of that. Because God will take care of us. He give us hope for this life and then the assurance of the next day. God, I pray God bless us. I pray God help us. As we keep striving to be more for him, that we live a life in hope that is the anchor of our soul. It is the thing that keeps us when everything's trying to pull us away. Our hope will keep us. It will fuel us to keep doing for God. To keep striving for God, to keep living for God, to keep teaching for God. Oh, yes. Our hope, the anchor of us. I pray God continue to bless us, continue to help us as His people, as we live our lives out according to His plan. This morning, if you're here and you're not a Christian, you ought to be one. You need to hear that Jesus came from heaven, suffered, died on the cross for our sins. Believe that. After hearing that he did that for you, believe that and be willing to repent of your sins. You're going to put your way down. Lord, I'm no longer going to live the way I've been living. I'm going to live my life for you. And then be willing to confess, yes, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. Confess that with your mouth. 
Be willing to be buried in baptism with them for the remission, the forgiveness, the taking away, the washing, the cleansing away of all of the sin. Everything you've ever done. You'll be added to the body of Christ. The church. Live faithful unto them. And you have received the crown of God. You will have hope of eternal life. If you're a Christian, if you haven't been all the way down, happy to be. I want to encourage you. If you sin, you want to get that right with God. Repent, confess, we'll pray with you for you. God will forgive you. And all of us together keep working out. If you stand in it, that's just make it known. Let's gather. We stand. Stand together for this. Have you been to Jesus? What a cleansing found. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? And are you fully trusted in His grace? And if power are you washed? Christ in the blood of the Lamb. before you now for the communion as New Testament Christians we partake of the Lord's Supper on the first day of the week as commanded in Acts chapter 20 verse 7 allow me to read now a passage from 2nd Corinthians chapter 9 
starting at verse 23. And forgive me, I messed up that's the wrong passage. Yeah. Jeff. Yeah. Bear with me, y'all. I lost my very next one. Okay. I have received of the Lord that which also I have delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus Christ the same night which have, which he was betrayed to bring and as he had given thanks he break it and say, he, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup, and he sucked, saying, this is the cup. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye eat, eat this uh, excuse me. This cup is is a new test in um, in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink of it in remembrance of me. For as often as you drink, you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink of his cup of the Lord, unworthy shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of his cup. For he that eateth and drinketh eateth the bread and drinketh his cup. Eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Let's give thanks for the bread. Heavenly Father, thank you for being a God. We thank you for all you, all of your blessings. We ask that you bless this bread and present your Son by in Jesus Christ's name. That we pray. Amen. Let's do thanks for the cup. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for being our God. We ask that you bless this cup that represents you, Son, blood. It is in Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Amen. This concludes this portion of the service. Well, I stand before you with the announcement this morning for a great day. And thank you, Brother Elford, for the sermon on this morning. It's good to see everyone here this morning to come together and work with us. And we'll chase if you are visiting with us. You are our honored guest. And we did not pass our business card for uh, the reason being, you know, we 
have to slow them down. We don't want to uh, do anything that may compromise uh, on anyone. So at this time, I do know a few visions that we have. We have a cook family with us this morning. We have a neighbor with us this morning. And we have a brother visiting with him this morning. So maybe it's forever. All right, glad to have you here this morning. Thank you for coming. And thank everyone for being here on this morning. Um, the only announcement I really have right now is, is regarding the new conference bill. Uh, we are waiting on the return of that package. So I think that package is back this year. We'll be able to take care of whatever it was for that. But also to our young people, once this uh, quarantine has been lifted, we will be back to plan, do something uh, with our kids uh, and, and young adults as far as an activity, maybe going out of town, we'll get it done. Uh, keep that in your mind as soon as everything is clear with that, we will be doing an activity uh, for more than conference for the next year. And those are the Oh yeah, continue to pray for Brother uh, Woods, who has not been well, and Sister Woods as well, uh, this morning. Also Brother Manning, uh, he has not been well this morning. Uh, and Sister Manning, who is feeling some better, but she's taking care of Brother Manning. Uh, and, and there may be others that didn't have that are not feeling well this morning. Uh, continue to pray one for another, for those that are sick, pray for those that are bereaved. And also just remind of Sister Malone, she is back in town. So pray for her and her family as well. Anything else on this one? Thanks for being here. We'll have a song and we'll be good to Morning, church. Morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. You're welcome. I don't know if y'all can hear me or not. We can hear you. We can hear you. I'm gonna take it off video. Okay. Thank you, Farron. <laughs> 